ok. So, I repeat an analog signal band limited which is a <coughs> band limited function or band limited signal that is if you take the analog Fourier transform it is limited from minus omega h to omega h, h for highest frequency. So, h ok actually the magnitude is limited from minus omega h to omega h ok that is a 0 outside this zone and it is sampled now to generate a sequence sequence x n where x n is nothing but x a the n into t n into t is a time point at that point what is the value of the analog function that I am calling n is sample of the sequence. That sequence and I am sampling following Nyquist condition that is I am sampling at an analog sampling rate of 2 pi by t t is the period sampling period that is greater than equal to twice the band limiting frequency. Then you have seen that the sequence which I obtained by sampling analog this analog function at that rate that is a period capital T is DTFT will take this shape where from minus pi to pi whatever you see that will be a replica of original analog Fourier transform. Only thing is it was a function of capital omega it is a function of small omega and a multiplication by 1 by capital T of this took place because that was the formula 1 by T times this ok. Otherwise shape wise it is same. Therefore, it leads to an interesting question that what is this GTFT? And again, since capital omega is greater than or equal to 2 omega h, half sampling frequency omega base by 2 is greater than or equal to capital omega h, half sampling frequency maps to pi, capital omega h maps to small omega h, so pi is greater than this. So, whenever there is no aliasing half sampling frequency is greater than or equal to the band limiting frequency or in digital domain pi is greater than or equal to small omega h. Small omega h comes from capital omega h this is the situation. So, we are assuming no aliasing case because Nyquist's condition was satisfied. Then what is this DTFT? We know DTFT for any small omega on this axis of your choice is ok this is a DTFT, but DTFT if I restrict small omega from minus pi to pi that is I plot only this function then this looks very much like this there is no right half there is no left half only this much other is 0 ok. So, you see capital X e j omega if I take from omega from this point to this point, sometimes I can go up to this fully, okay. that is if 2 pi by t is equal to 2 omega h, then half sampling frequency will be equal to omega h, pi will be equal to omega, small omega h. So, we will start directly here, in some cases there will be gap, that is why to be most general I take from minus pi to pi. Okay. I take the DTFT that is I do not look at frequency points omega to the right or to the left I see only here okay, this function I look at it and then here then, then here small omega wherever this small omega I represent write it by capital omega t. Okay, so, it will become a function of capital omega and then I multiplied by capital T because this was obtained by dividing by T. So, this can be obtained in one band by multiplying by T. So, that means T times capital X e to the power j DTFT is not analog Fourier transform is DTFT, but small omega replaced by capital omega t radian per second into second that is so it is radian. Okay, this is a DTFT. This function will be identical to this because I am multiplying by capital T 
and replacing small omega by capital omega. So, I should get back the original one okay, from here to here. Not do not include this side ones because they are not present there. That is why first thing I am doing is restricting omega in the range minus pi to pi and then doing the reverse frequency mapping for small omega I am going to capital omega in the DTF 2 itself multiplying by capital T. So, resulting thing is a function of capital omega that is same as this which follows from here. Okay. <coughs> Therefore, now look at this original function x a t. What is x a t? Is the inverse analog Fourier transform of this but this guy is band limited, it is from minus omega h to omega h. All right. Here first this part I replace by this. We have already seen that they are same. So, T Sorry, this is omega. I am very sorry. This is omega. I am not really looking into this omega. It is inverse Fourier transform. Okay. <coughs> All right. But there is no point in taking the integral from minus infinity to infinity because this function is 0 outside this range. Okay. So, I take it from just a minute. I can take it from minus omega h to omega h, but to general suppose I take it from here to here, because sometimes this can coincide with this. Outside this, this is 0, so no point in carrying on the integration. This capital T can come out, this is this. But this is DTFT at this D. So, I can replace it now by the DTFT expression. J this much analog digital frequency omega t into n. this into the power j omega t d omega. All right. Now, there is a double summation. So, you know very well the what the next step is interchange the two summations. All right. So, next step t by 2 pi this inner summation goes out x of n it does not depend on omega, inner, inner summation is with respect to capital omega, this does not depend on so this omega. So, this can come out as common okay, and I am left with this inside e to the power j capital omega t minus n t d omega. All right. This we integrate with respect to omega. 
that is what we get. This integral with respect to omega. So, j t minus n t will come below and it will be same as j omega t minus n t and omega s by 2 Okay. Then what happens? It will be power j theta minus it will be power minus j theta. So, it is twice j sin theta. So, t by 2 pi twice j sin whatever I am writing that here j t minus n t of course, there is a summation x n that I am forgetting there is a summation this part I am ok. This I write again Maybe I write on a fresh page this page does not have much space. So, this integral t by 2 pi summation x of n and then this twice j sin this omega was omega s by 2 and then minus omega s by 2. So, it is omega s by 2 into this quantity. If you want you can see look at that thing it is equal j omega t minus n t remains j t minus n t here replace omega by omega s by 2 and then again minus omega s by 2 that minus this. So, it will be twice j sin omega s by 2 into t minus n t divided by this. So, twice j sin omega s by 2 into t minus n t divided by that j t minus n t. So, j and j cancels. 2 2 cancels t by pi you can bring the t by pi here below this as pi by t and t minus n t this x n sin omega base by 2 omega s by 2 what was omega s 2 pi by t. Okay. So, what is omega s by 2? It is pi by t. So, if you bring pi by t here, pi by t into t minus n t. So, actually it is a sink function, okay. delayed sink. It is sink of this, if you call it x sin x by x. So, sink So, you see this is a very very interesting very important result that we started with original x a t. So, if the function is band limited if the function is band limited and it is sampled following Nyquist theorem then from this sequence the samples because you are sampling so you are getting a sample train and that forms a sequence. So, from the sample values you can get back a full original signal analog signal just by this summation. Okay, these are fixed functions and when n equal to 0 so x n x 0 into just sin pi t by capital T and pi t by capital T then x 1 delayed version of that x 2 delayed further delayed version of that and they get superimposed and by superimposition you get a function of small t which turns out to be x a t. This is the fundamental theorem in DSP that if the function is if I start with an analog function and is given that is band limited 
then I can always sample it at more than twice the bandwidth and all information of the envelope x a t, all information about the envelope x a t that is con that will be contained in the sequence in the samples, because from the samples I can recover back my x a t. Okay. So, if the function is band limited, I should sample it at more than at least equal to twice omega h or more than that twice the band limiting frequency, then the samples I get which form a sequence x n that carries all the information about the full analog signal, because using those samples I can get back by a formula like this the full analog function correctly. This formula is called Nyquist. interpolation formula. We can try to explain the uh, try to understand how it looks like consider this function sin pi by t by t divided by pi by t into t. This function how will it look like? That is small n equal to 0. After all, if it is small n equal to 1, this will be just shifted to the right by capital T, small n minus 1, this entire thing will be shifted to the left by capital T, so on and so forth. So, I am considering n equal to 0 case. It is sin x by x at small t equal to 0, at small t equal to 0, it will be sin 0 by 0, 0 by 0 form, and then you apply the law hospital theorem, differentiate the numerator and denominator, you have pi by t into cosine and here you have just pi by t. So, they cancel and at t equal to 0, what you have? You have 1. Okay, sin pi by t into t, if you differentiate pi by capital T comes out and you get cosine of that and here pi by t, the two cancels. Now, if t becomes 0, this is 1. So, it goes to 1. And then small t, suppose at capital T. So, to look at the numerator, numerator is just pure sinusoid function. Okay, numerator, if I have just numerator only, that suppose sin pi t by t, this is a pure, just numerator, this is a pure sinusoid function. Okay, at t equal to 0, it will be 0. Hmm then at t equal to capital T again sin pi it will be 0 and at t by 2 it will be maximum. Okay, t by 2 it will be sin pi by 2 and like this. Okay, it will be periodic. It will go on like this. So, it will be crossing 0 at capital T, 2T, 3T like that, but the denominator function if you leave out the point t equal to 0, at t equal to 0 you have to apply La hospital because it is 0 by 0 form. So, that is why it is not 0 is 1, but after that this function is periodic, but this is if t is positive it is growing in magnitude. So, denominator is increasing as t increases. So, the sinusoidal oscillation will get damped. So, damping same for the negative side magnitude of the denominator is going up. So, it will be damped. So, t equal to capital T in the denominator you have T T cancelling pi, but the numerator 0 and it is varying sinusoidal this will come like this and it will it is getting damped. So, it will not go fully up to minus 1 it will come back here at 2 T it will be like this then 3 t like this, then like this, like this. Okay. On this side also you can verify minus t, minus 2 t, minus 3 t like this. This will be this function. When n equal to 1, it is t minus capital T, t minus capital T. So, the entire thing will be shifted to the right by capital T. t equal to 2, twice t like that. Now, let us try to understand how what this formula means, Nyquist formula be implies k 
case the take the case of x n equal to 0. So, you have the term x 0 into sin pi by this this sin pi small t by capital T divided by pi small t by capital T. So, this function is to be multiplied by x small 0. So, it was 1 here. So, height will become x 0 and then it will be like this. This is t 2 t minus t minus 2 t 3 t like that. Then consider n equal to 1, it will be x 1 sin pi by capital T then within bracket t minus capital T divided by pi by capital T within bracket again t minus capital T. So, instead of t it is t minus capital T which means the entire function will be shifted to the right move to the right by an amount capital T which means this and then multiplied by x 1 that means, the entire same, same function origin will move here and it is multiplied by x 1. So, height will be x 1 say x 1 it will have 0 crossing t to the right further t to the right here also like this. Then if n equal to 2 this will further shifted to the right multiplied by x 2. So, it will be here original will move here zero crossing like this so on and so forth from this side also. Here again you can have another one multiplied by x minus 1 going like this like this. Okay. Now, when you superimpose all of them you see consider n equal to 0 at n equal to 0 everybody else going through origin only this fellow remains as it is. So, summation will be x 0 because others are 0. So, we will at capital T this is going through 0, this is going through 0, this is going through only this fellow remains, this value is x 1. So, at capital T value remains x 1, at 2 t value remains x 2, at minus t value remains x minus 1, at intermediate points they get added and that is how this function is formed. Function I know at x at n equal to 0 resulting function analog function has sample how much? just a minute. At n equal to 0 analog function has value x a 0 which is same as x 0, 0 is 3. So, that will come up then at n, n equal to t you have got x a n x a t which is same as x 1. So, this will come up this x 1 is nothing but in terms of analog x a t. So, x a t coming up x a 0 coming up x a 2 t coming up and intermediate points they all get added because they are overlapping they are getting added and the envelope gets formed. This is the meaning of that summation, but this is again a fundamental thing it means that uh, if you have got an analog function x a t and that is band limited then uh, you do not need you can sample it at twice or more than twice the band limiting frequency you get a sequence of samples train of samples which forms a sequence. Using the samples you can get back the original envelope by a interposition formula which is called Nyquist interposition formula okay, this interposition formula. In fact, it given this samples, because you are giving only these samples, you can now construct the envelope and you can get 
the value at any arbitrary point, any arbitrary maybe t by e, some k, say, okay, that kind of thing. So, <coughs> this interposition is that way very useful, you know. You can have fractional fractional sampling point, the value there can be obtained in terms of these samples. Okay. The very interesting topic in GSP. So, that is all for today's class. In the next class, I will consider a special kind of linear time invariant systems called rational systems. Thank you very much.